So hi, it's Martha Creek. You can contact me, marthacreek.com. That's my email, website, everything that about me that you ever want to know and things you don't want to know are all found there. And I have with me today a close and dear friend named Travis Darren Wilson. And he is an entrepreneur. He is a world traveler and he is a um, walking mystic in his own right. And the purpose of this call today is to have mentoring moments with Martha. So how can we be mentored by um, learning from, listening to, and connecting with people that are applying spiritual principles and are making conscious choices and, and, and really efforting in, in major magnificent ways to live a, a life that's um, in integrity with themselves and in the way that they believe is going to be beneficial to them and humanity. So, so glad you're here with me, honey. Thank you for taking the time to do this. Yeah. I've, I've really been looking forward to it. And you were my second. Yes. So you're my second uh -oh. mentoring with Martha moment. So <laughs> you're right up there with the launch of a big, important series. <laughs> so tell me, honey, what your yes was based on, like, like what, what you believe could become of this in an interview like this, or what you believe that could come from us sitting down like this together? Well, I just thought that maybe I could share some of my insights into um, the workings of, well, first off, my profession, which is, and my experience of that um, in action, which I've been involved in the travel industry for the better part of my life and so in both uh, as a as a as a on both ends of the spectrum so from planning and organizing but also to traveling uh, extensively and um, I just thought that there may be some experiences and some ideas that that I've had through the years that have worked or not um, that may be I could share with people that would be um, of, of assistance, of guidance, and um, and you know it's it's like uh, this have opportunity, obviously, knowing that you have a large following, a large uh, a lot larger audience than I I would reach. Um, I thought, well, that 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 sounds like a great opportunity to hopefully share whatever you can take out of it. So. Yeah. Well, point. you're, you're wise, honey. And I, as Darren says, the biggest part of his life, it's, it's literal. And is he's talking a 30 years, a 10, three times 10 deck, three times 10 years. So three decades of planning, booking, um, exploring travel, uh, creating around travel and learning some mighty big lessons about travel and the what to's and the what not to's and the why to and the why not to. So some of that'll come through naturally here, I think, as we get into the question. So uh, go ahead and stay here for the recording, um, Darren, your website, uh, your Facebook accounts, things like that, so that people know directly how to get in touch with you. So the, the website uh, and the Facebook account are both under All About Travel. Actually, it's all about Trav, and of course, this came from a creative part of, um, so just a little bit about the name, and the name is all about Trav, came 30 years ago, when some of you may remember the antique called the phone book, which uh, AA Travel was right behind AAA, AAA, so I was the first choice when people went to the phone book. And of course, um, when I went to take that, uh, as, as time progressed, um, All About Travel, which is the name of the company before the internet, uh, basically. And when I went to get a website, All About Travel was gone. And so I thought, hmm, let's try to get witty here. So my first name is Travis. So I thought, well, that's a good play. All About Travis or All About Travel. So. Anyway, it's a l l a b o u t t r a v dot com is the website, and um, and the Facebook page is under All About Travel as well. Um, and uh, so that's the little expo exploration on the name of the company. Just to give so that's you how you um, was so talk about that a little bit, then Darren, if you will. So mm -hmm. the question that was on my mind as I prepared for this was. I want to, with you and other people that I plan on bringing in the series, it's like, talk about some of your defining moments, any, def any moment that you would call classically a defining moment. What, what has some of those been? And then specifically around 
um, your entrepreneur starting your own business and a business in travel. So anything, say anything you want to about your defining moments. Well, for me, it's pretty simple. I, um, I had, uh, I had worked in a corporate atmosphere in actually in hum uh, human resources and, uh, well, we're talking right after I got out of college. So I'd worked for a, a big company, uh, a national company, international company um, for several years and just knew that I hated it. And um, it wasn't for me. And um, I uh, decided that I was going to do something different, but I had no idea what. And I'd never grown up traveling. I grew up very, you know, very modestly, quite honestly. So uh, I, but I always knew that, that it was there, the pull, the desire to see and experience as much as I could. And so at that time, it was a different time then for anybody that's younger. Uh, if you can imagine traveling, no internet, no, no online, there was nothing like that in existence. And so it was all face to face and it was all excitement about learning places and things like that. So anyway, I uh, had, had traveled a few times and this was when I was still working in that corporate atmosphere. And um, I got to the point where, uh, as happened several times in my life, which I'll talk about, um, where I just couldn't stand it anymore. And I literally went to... Um, uh, one morning is basically almost the way I remember it. I, I struggled literally awake at night all night for several months thinking I can't do this anymore. I can't stand it. And so I just said enough. And I, at that point, I just quit and said, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm not going to do this. And as happened, um, I, I, uh, at that point in time, I had considered the travel industry in some regard. I had actually even tried to become a flight attendant, but I was too tall, um, I'm 6'4". And um, so I kept thinking, how else can I do this? I had actually been a pilot, a private pilot, even just trying other avenues just to get into the industry and the experience of traveling. Um, but I, uh, so one day I just uh, was looking through the paper after I quit. And of course, th th at that point, uh, having income was important to me. And so, and, and, ur and urgent to me. Um, so I found a little advertisement for something called Travel Professionals International School. So I went to this course. It was a three month course. I'll never forget it. And um, you learned all about city codes. You learned about how to book a tour what a cruise was, um, and some of the, what now seem very archaic in the travel industry, how to write a ticket, how to calculate taxes on tickets, and how to, how to change currencies from one to the other, um, and some of these other things that now are just a push of a button. But uh, so I um, went through that course, which I, at that point, was really all that was available in, in that business, that industry. It wasn't a, it, it, it still isn't a um, kind of a, a licensure kind of thing or anything. It's just basically you went and knocked on a door of the travel agency and said, I want a job. Um, however, I thought that that would give me an in to do that. So I completed this course, got my certificate, and um, started knocking on doors. And um, I, 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 at that point, travel agencies were fairly, much more commonplace than they are now. And so I uh, will never forget, I wrote in, sent resumes into several offices and um, never heard anything, never heard anything. At that time, it was actually kind of competitive because it was, people wanted to work in the industry to travel. I mean, basically for, for the travel efforts. And so uh, ultimately, I finally got a call back from a company um, that was actually called Travel Professionals as well as part of the same operation that did the schooling. Um, and uh, so I went in for an interview and got that job. And that was in the, um, that was uh, the start of it. And, and I worked at that office for about nine years. There were three of us um, and then the three full-time people and then some what they call independent contractors who worked outside uh, but but funneled their sales through that office and um, 
so I worked there and I was actually trained there. I mean, I, I, I really should give them kudos because they really did do a lot to really, they were good, good agents and they trained me in the what ifs and the whatnots and, and so forth. And, um, but the next big defining minute, so the first defining moment I can remember was just saying, just quitting, just stepping out of the corporate world mm -hmm. and saying, I can't stand this. The second one came about eight or nine years into my employee in the industry. And um, I met somebody, I met somebody named Dave Defoe, who is still a big part of my life. And so Dave was an entrepreneur extraordinaire at that point. He had started a company and um, it had become successful and had a large space of rental and, you know, dozen employees and so forth. And he, and, he, and at that point, I had been working for that office for several, many years and uh, basically was doing all of the booking at that point and, uh, or, or predominantly, 80%, 80 plus percent. And I just knew the owners were older. I just knew that, you know, intuitively that it just, something was shifting again. And so maybe the seven year shift itch, I don't know. And, uh, so I, um, at that point, uh, Dave came along and um, we got closer and s traveled some together. And uh, he, um, at some casual conversation, he's like, you know, you, what are you doing, basically? And I'm like, well, you know, I've thought before, even when I got in this, I thought, you know, I might at some point in my life like to just go out on my own and, and just do travel. I mean, I'm doing it anyway. It's just a matter of who's keeping the commissions. So he says, we'll do it. Well, of course, for somebody who hasn't ever conceived of doing it, I mean, realistically, it's like you dream one thing, you think one thing, but physically doing it is a whole other thing. But he's like, well, it's easy. Let's just go file the name for the company. And then it doesn't mean you're going to do anything, but you'll have the name if you decide to go further. So I went uh, to the state and filed a, 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 a basically to hold the name All About Travel LLC. And Dave and I went on a trip. Off we went together. And um, uh, during the course of that trip, we were going actually to Greece and uh, Turkey. I'll never forget it. And uh, we did the trip. It was about a two-week trip and came back. And on the way back home, I got a call from the office that I worked and they said, uh, well, when you get home to back tomorrow, we want to have a chat. And I'm like, well, that's odd. So perfect, no problem. So I'll be in in the morning. What's ironic is I just remembered when we were coming home that trip, um, we got waylaid in New York. The flight was delayed and we missed our flight back to Louisville. So that night I had to call them. I'll never forget. And said, well, I actually won't be there tomorrow. But when I get back, we can chat. And so anyway, the next day I got back uh, a day late and uh, as soon as I went in, the manager, the two owners all went into a room and they says, well, the, the owner, uh, his name doesn't matter, but he said he was a big, uh, he owned a couple of businesses and he was always reading Business First, which is a local Kentucky business magazine. And he had seen Travis Wilson had filed to hold the name All About Travel, just casually reading a magazine one day. And he said, and unfortunately, you know, we, we think you're gonna go into business. We think you're probably thinking about leaving us. And so they said, what you need to do is just take everything and clean your desk out and go. Basically they said, we don't, you know, we, we love you, you're a great person and we don't want to have a, a chance that you may take all your files and sneak them out and then never show up again. So that was that. And I came to work and left within 30 minutes. And so the second big shift was when that happened because um, as I say, thinking about something and being pushed <laughs> by the world into doing something are two different things. And, I literally had no infrastructure set up. I didn't have phones and I didn't have internet. And frankly, I didn't have money. I, I remember at the time, I think my whole entire life savings at that point was just shy of $2,000. So 
Dave said, you know what? Don't worry about it. Like, come on already, snap out of it. And so, of course, Dave and I at that time weren't as close as we are now. So I'm thinking, well, you know, okay, whatever. Sure, sure. Long story bearable is I ended up moving. I started my first office in a warehouse. He had a warehouse space at that point. And I mean, literally con concrete floors and aluminum walls, corrugated aluminum walls. And I went in the next, uh, within the next week or two, and I, I got AT&T to put a phone in. I got um, an actual internet connection, which was very novel. I got um, a uh, petition boards to set up and make a, a, a separate working area. And there was all about travel in the back of a warehouse with uh, forklifts running around. And uh, that was, uh, it was in 1999, 2000, so 20 years ago this year. And um, so th those were really the defining moments of how it happened. And I would love to take credit for it more, um, but I've often said that in my life specifically, that the biggest things that have happened to me are things that I absolutely didn't see coming, <laughs> didn't see going. And I look back now and think, oh my God, what would my life been had they not happened? At the time they were horrific unimaginable, horrific, sleepless, sick, blah, blah. And now I live in a, you know, I, my life is like I, forever different because of it in a good way. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful, honey. Um, since that, then what would you say to somebody that may be in the experiences you had of get you pack your things and go, um, um, anything like that where, or just wake, woke up one day and realized they, they cannot do this. It, it's, it's, I've got to go. So I don't have anything to go to. I don't know where I'm going to go, but I know I can't do this. This is killing me, like well, killing some aspect of me. So what would you say to somebody in that position? The first Either of those thing, positions? Yeah. The first thing that I would say, looking back and I can almost, well, no, I can, I can envision myself on the couch at night and just being awake and really, uh, I mean, almost fetal position, is to know that it's gonna happen and that it's not going to kill you and it's gonna kill you. Mm -hmm. And just go with it and let it go, let it come and uh, let it go. Because as a rule, at least my experience has been that it literally has never happened and not worked out better than I could have expected. And just the recent um, world events with, you know, politically and all these other things where you feel like, oh my gosh, these are not good things have always worked out every single time. So I would say just, just let it go, let it come, let it go, and then do something. My David, uh, one of the things he tells me all the time, and him, he's very good at it, is action cures fear. Thought doesn't cure fear. Crying in fetal position doesn't cure fear. Action cures fear. So I am afraid of this. Well, guess what? The one thing that's going to do to clear that fear up is do something about it. And sometimes you may feel like, doing something about it is laying there and crying and stuff. But, but once you just get that clarity, like, okay, I'm going to, not to say that the first thing you do is going to actually cure it, but eventually things will change and you'll be like, you don't even see it happen. You don't even know what's happening. And then eventually it'll be just like, you'll be on the other side and thinking, Oh my God, give it time, let it live its life and keep on moving on. So. Yeah, thank you, honey. I, you know, I, and I take quite a bit of heat for this of being a doer. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's, it, then I, that's profound, honey. So thank you for saying it's, it's one of my primary takeaways so far. Action yeah. cures fear. Action also cures worry to a degree. Action cures um, apathy. Um, so it's like we could almost fill in the blank there with whatever our current dilemma is and go some action, any action. And, and, you know, I'm a proponent for crying some, like yep. have a good cry and proven scientifically that tears have pain relief in them. So I'm all about crying, cry, 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 and then take some action. Right. So crying plus some action, crying plus there is something I can do. I may not can do this much, but there's something I can do here and for my own sake to do it.
Well, so one I, of the questions, I'm sorry, honey. I, I was going to say, and, and, I, and of course you can edit all this out, but I know, I know you obviously personally, and I know that you're always much more on the doer side. You're much more like, and I know you'll have your moments behind the scenes that people don't know, but on, on the outside, you're just the go-getter. And this, this comes from somebody who is not, and people would see me as somebody who is because of where I'm at. But I mean, I literally, if I didn't have, the other thing I wanted to say is let the people like the Marthas and the Daves carry you, lift you some point, give you that guidance and listen to them because first off, they, it's, it's, they only want your well-being. And sometimes, like for me personally, I don't have that something inside that, that gives me the, the strength to do these things sometimes, uh, and especially as I've gotten older, but I have, do have the um, infrastructure around me in the way of people, friends, and loved ones that give me that extra boost. So uh, let them let them be strong for you sometimes when you don't think you can, because other times you're other times you're going to be strong for others. Maybe you don't even know it. So it's yeah, always that's easier, it. it's always easier to be stronger for others than it is for yourself, in my experience. So. Yeah. Well, thank you for saying it, honey. And, you know, that's a message that's a universal message for all of us that we do not have to do this alone mm -hmm. so that we are here then to offset, to carry with people their burdens and to certainly have some stamina for not to take it on as a burden ourselves, but to walk with people through the times that they're, to, that they're burdened by something yeah. and that we absolutely don't have to do it alone. But it's so wise, Darren. I mean, even your capacity to, to see that somebody's intentions are with your best interest in mind, like most people would just call it meddling or, or sticking their nose in or something like that, versus these people have my care in mind. And that to, even if I can't comprehend it at times, or even if it's kind of getting on a nerve mm -hmm. or running, you know, rubbing me the wrong way, I, just to stay open to this is actually people that have my best interest in mind. That's, that's, that's its own wisdom nugget for, for today, honey. So beautiful to hear. One of my questions was, besides family, friends, and then whatever your relationship with is with God or creator, whatever you relate to in that. So setting aside creator, family, and friends, where do you draw your support? What keeps you, um, practically, what keeps you on a more solid foundation? Um, I would have to say... Um... Realistically, I think that it, that when I look at that, um, first off, um, I'm assuming I can use myself, my own experiences, because I look back at these things, and as I've gotten older and, and been through all these things, the one thing that I use that I reflect back on all the time, more so in the last five years, is that I simply look back at my life, at what has happened, and think, I am, I'm fine. Now, I have survived being fired. I have survived whatever you want to pick out of your own life. And I am here and I am fine. So I gain a lot of um, personal strength and, and, and yeah. foundation because of that, because I survived it then, I could survive it again. I went through it then, I can go through it again. And if you stop and think about that sometimes, it's like, you know what, it is the truth. I did it and, yeah. and came out fine. So that's one, one little piece that I can think of that really supports me. I do too find um, recently um, some of the other things that I personally like uh, is um, staying active. I know this sounds odd, but um, I, love to, I love to just be out and active and walk and do those kinds of things. And if you really take those times as, um, as really gift times, especially for somebody that's really busy, I found that, um, that it really makes me feel more centered. Um, and uh, especially over the course of the last period, uh, last few weeks, months, I get out and, and I really enjoy that. And then also, um, I, uh, you know, I still find 
that I, I read some of what I would call, not re read and also auditorily uh, uh, intake things from different people that have been recommended to me as, as potential um, spiritual teachers, um, you know, uh, so that always keeps me um, a little bit more drawn back into the truth. So when I get these cockamamie things running through my head, maybe I'll play a little video or a little uh, YouTube or an audible or something and just, uh, and I do it a lot of times while I'm driving or things like that, that really just, just snippets. Uh, I even use, uh, sometimes I'll actually even, I'm, a, I'm um, kind of a, a person that likes the visuals and things. So, so I'll even take little pieces of books and tear out or cut out or copy and stick on the, the door at work or stick on the computer screen. Um, this too shall pass or, you know, little one-liners. So I use those kinds of things really a lot of times as tools to help me kind of stay focused. So I've got, I've got, I love witnessing you doing that too, honey, because mm -hmm. as much as we say as, sound, as strange as it sounds and even grassroots kind of answers to it, but if it's yeah. a moving, taking a walk, being out in nature. I mean, this is known and proven scientifically that people have it, a better sense of well-being physically, emotionally, spiritually, when yeah. you're able to do that, to move some and to be out in nature and to take a bike ride or take a hike or walk or walk across the bridge or whatever it is. Yeah. And certainly to spiritually develop, which also cares for our emotional components too. Mm -hmm. So I was also thinking, honey, what um, I want to make sure we get in here people that are into travel and that are going to be booking travel and you know there's so much since the movie the bucket list that's a common question so yeah. i'll i'll be definitely probably put that in here but i want to hear though from a prof an industry professional um and a well equipped one and well trained one and well lived out one like what would be your top three trips for travelers um so let's do this because i get this question a lot and it's, it's almost too big a question to answer easily. So what if we just do a couple of, like, what if we say maybe value trips, experiential trips? So let's kind of, I don't know if that's able to do, but. Oh, yeah. You mean to so, segment it off? Oh, yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, because, mm -hmm. So for me, if you're looking for a great experience, and a good and a good you know a good financial value, but also a wonderful uh, option. I, I always think an all inclusive is is the way to go. Now, specifically, like you know, uh, for me, if I was going to just pick a perfect situation with that, I would probably do something like a Mexico or Central America because you can get a nice, cost effective trip. You can really be carefree because you don't have to worry about, you know, food and drinks and so forth. It's all paid for. But also, considering a place like Mexico, for example, you get so much availability as far as uh, you can experience uh, historical insights, doing mine ruins. You can do uh, all sorts of uh, activities from swim with dolphins to parasailing to diving to sailing all of that stuff all in one destination and it's one of the most cost effective places to go to in the world um, so it's a great kind of a destination um, in that regard so let's say you have a bucket list that you want to fulfill but you don't have a bucket of money that would be one place you could do a lot of things that are going to be really life experiences um you know climbing the pyramids or or doing uh chichen itza or some of these really ancient places uh, spiritual ancient places but yet going really cost effectively uh, yeah let's pause there a minute darren because that's so important because you may have 20 things on your bucket list like parasailing or diving or snorkeling or a day at a beach or a, a, a day in solitude mm -hmm. or the blue crystal clear waters or mm -hmm. or 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 and it you can get 20 things <laughs> checked off of a bucket list all in one seaside resort or oceanside resort in that way Correct. That's right. So um, I hear then that that your uh, your inv invitation about that is really for people that are looking for beach all inclusive something they can do water waterside and waterway, mm -hmm. so very destination based places. But mm -hmm. there but but still a, a myriad of things to do and right. ways to experience what else that may be on their bucket list besides right. just traveling there. That's right. 
right? Yeah, so pick another segment then. What would be your tips? Um, so as far as um, just really uh, two of the places come to mind specifically for me of destinations that are that were really, um, I, I'm trying to clarify it because one was just this year for me on a personal level um, that was really just a, an, um, a spiritually, but also just a really, a, a, and historically, um, just really moving, shifting kind of a destination and trip. And that was uh, Israel. And, and that's that part of the world, the Holy Land. And that may not be for everyone, of course, because it's a big uh, investment of effort and distance and things. Um, but I just really, that was fascinating to me. And I've been to a lot of historical places. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's like I was going to Rome the first time and seeing the Colosseum, but yet it just was kept going. You know, every day you'd go to Jerusalem or you'd go to Bethlehem or you'd go to these places where you, the history was, you know, even, the, even Jesus was, when he was born, was already snowballed and steeped in history from that region. So think Jesus 2,000 years ago in the Jewish culture had already been there for 2,000 years. So you're, if you really took that destination in, it was almost overwhelming uh, on a, just a, 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 a human small scale to think about how much had actually happened in that one little small area. I mean, it's like the state of the size of Tennessee or something, you know. Yeah. Um, so that was really great. A true epicenter. I got to witness you in that, honey, and your, all your reading, your preparation, and yeah. how you got into the history of it and to the life and times and really discerning for yourself, like, what part do you actually believe? What part's true? So that's what I really enjoy about people's travel the most is that they'll mm -hmm. pick a place that's meaningful to them, and they have their own reasons for it. It could be, yeah. I don't know, I just woke up and it's someplace I wanted to go. I, and I even say, I was born with a list of assignments since my earliest days I had a clarity in my mind that I'm going to go to certain places that included sail around South America. Mm -hmm. And I had no means for that whatsoever. I yep. did not look into it. I did not save money for it. And then one day my friend Stephen called who works on a cruise line and said, hey, I'm bringing you on as my buddy and we're going to sail around South America. So here it goes. So uh, also Darren and I are planning a trip back to the Holy Land because I couldn't go when he went on this trip and it's very important to me too. So if that is on your list, then stay tuned with All About Trav yep. and All About Travel and, yep. and, and be each of our websites because it'll be posted there when the information is available sometime uh, planned in 2021 to do that. Yeah. Um, also, I was thinking about um, anything else relative to... Um, uh, more um, obscure kind of places or some yeah. of the places like I remember when you had your open house honey and one of the in that um, different space that you went into when you came out of the warehouse when yeah. we had the open house and what a big party that was and we had a map of the world up there yeah. and people went and put their push pins in the places in the world they wanted to go and I couldn't wait for the end of that evening to see where yeah. do people want to go and it was the majority of people wanted to go to Italy yeah. And I just found that interesting because I love it. I've been a few times and I love going there and I couldn't believe that that kind of diverse group of people yeah. all had a similar interest to get to one spot in the world called Italy. Yeah. And of course you were booking a lot of travel to Italy then and likely right. still are now. So yeah. if there's that kind of hot spot in the world, where are people, if we put that map up today right. and said, let's get a hundred people in here and put a push pin in it. What do you predict would be where the pins would land? Well, the current places, so I want to do that, and then I want to tell you about my favorite place, but the, first, the places that are really hot right now are Iceland, and, and, and that seems to be uh, kind of peaking. You know, it's been hot for a couple of years, but people are really talking about it, and, um, and then, the, uh, so that's been really a good destination. Now, I have not been there yet, but I think it would be kind of my spot to go because it's very naturalistic. Um, I just had some clients get back from doing Northern Lights touring up there and going out into the countryside. And you can imagine waterfalls, mountains, glaciers, that kind of experience. Um, and, uh, and so that's been a very big uh, destination for people to experience. 
The other thing that is really kind of coming on um, to destinations, uh, and Europe kind of seems to be the place to go in the last probably five years or so, um, would be um, um, Croatia, of all places, which I was honored to get to go to two years ago and can actually see the draw and attraction. It's a stunning country. It's very, if you've been to Italy, it's very Italian-esque because it was ruled by the Venetians for over 500 years. So there's a lot of that kind of history there. But I also tell people, if you just want an experience uh, of what Croatia in general feels like and looks like, not, not from an, an experiential I mean, not being there, but just visually, if you've ever watched the Game of Thrones, a lot of that was filmed there. So literally walled cities, ancient walkways. I mean, and it's just, and it functions just like that today. They literally build modern towns, not buildings, inside these walled cities. So you go through the wall openings. The buildings are thousands of years old, mm -hmm. but they function with Starbucks in them. And so it's just really a juxtaposition to experience in an in a amazing way. And you're right on the Adriatic Sea. It's gorgeous. The water's yes. gorgeous. It's beautiful. The other place it's gotten to be hot that I was actually in planning to travel to this year is Portugal. And uh, people have just said, I've sent more people in the last probably year to Portugal than in the last 10 years. And every one of them said, oh my God, it was outstanding. The food was wonderful. The people, the culture. And so that's the other place that I'm really uh, getting a lot of positive feedback on. So I'm, uh, I'm excited about that. Well, thanks for lifting those up. So Portugal, you're welcome for this <laughs> uh, new blast and travel from not only people, but friendly, fun, innovative, yeah. kind-hearted, uh, giving, generous, spirited kind of people like us. Mm -hmm. So that's the people that we're going to associate with and recommend that to. Yeah. And I love that you can share like that, Darren, with people when they call, because I know people that just want to travel, but they don't know where. Yeah. They don't have a particular place in mind. So you sharing what you care about and love, as I've gotten to over the years. So yeah. I can confirm Croatia and Iceland for sure. That whole Mediterranean area, as you know, is a yeah. um, very, very favorite place of mine. And it's those seas, because it's like one beautiful blue sea after the other every day, every day, and primarily through cruising, which I really like, because I get to wake up and be in a different place without having any effort. All yeah. I had to do yeah. was sleep, and I wake up, and I'm in a new place. Yeah without any unpacking. So it's going to be interesting to see what, what become, how the, how the industries change, you know, exactly. and in time too, relative mm -hmm. to that. And then yeah. Australia is where I've had some of my uh, favorite hospitality greetings and people that um, were um, so kind and friendly and yeah. wonderful. So mm -hmm. many, many trips into there and another one planned for later this year. And we'll see, we'll see how that goes. So I want to hear, honey, where, what is your bucket list? What, what's on your radar as far as travel and why? Right. Well, and oddly enough, I, just a quick aside, when you said Australia, to when I started in the travel industry, you know how you had your South America trip? My two, like, just, I don't know why, but those places that I knew were Egypt and Australia. And, um, and both of them I've done now, and both were very, just uh, really remarkable destinations for various reasons. Uh, however, the one place that still stands in mind is one of my most memorable vacations because, and it's probably a little bit of everything, but uh, I, don't, I don't tend to be the kind of person that really uh, relaxes. When I'm here, I'm always active, busy, busy, like literally, um, I just don't stop and maybe my mind just says, you, you, you know, even though I don't, there's nothing really pressing, I'm, I have to wash my car or I have to do this, have that. So it's mentally busy. But when I've gone, one place I remember that, that I'll share that was, it, it was impossible to be that way was uh, French Polynesia, specifically Bora Bora. And I've always said to clients, um, because a lot of times, one of the things that I share with clients is that, you know, I can tell you these things and I can give you guidance and I can give you these visuals, but it's, it, you cannot duplicate actually being there. And it, when you go to a destination like French Polynesia, Bora Bora specifically, um, 
you literally are, I've often said that you could be there, and I did an overwater bungalow, for those that don't know what those are, they're basically standalone, people call them overwater huts. Well, they're far from huts, they're, you know, 1200 square foot, luxuriously mahogany floors and gorgeous, you know, uh, accommodation built over pilings over the ocean, basically. And so you're like on an, on, in a room over top of an aquarium is more or less how it is. But I've said people to people who have a book to those destinations that it's one of those places where literally the world could stop existing outside of your area and you would never know it. There's no, you're so separated from TV, from um, internet, you cannot. Now you're going to scare people. Relax. You're going to scare people. Good. <laughs> so this is one of those things where if you really, if you're really, your wish is to just really go relax. I took, I will never forget, Harry Potter was the big book series out at that time. And I took one of those books. And if anybody's read that, they're about this big. <laughs> read the entire book in my four or five days there because it's literally just that peaceful, no distractions. And um, if, if that scares you, well, give it a try because I can yeah. promise it won't after <laughs> you do it. And, uh, and it's just really, really, I mean, it's, gore it's stunning, first off. Uh, I mean, it's surreal just being in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, you know, on a basically, they call them Motu, but it's just a little sand island that they build these resorts off of. And uh, I mean, you may look out and see a whale shark. The next morning you look out and there's a stingray feeding off of your deck. The next day you go out and they're bringing breakfast to you in an outrigger canoe. I mean, it's those experiences that, that are just, un, 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 I don't know how, I'm, I'm lost for words to describe them. <laughs> well, yeah. your passion for it shows, Sonny, yeah. even with the words. And I was thinking about, as I listen with you describing the water, and, and that's your view, looking down on the water, but you're also a certified diver and a certified yeah. diver trainer. Mm -hmm. So you've also explored the world, underwater world, in very extensive ways. You're mm -hmm. also a pilot mm -hmm. and have explored the world from that view very extensively mm -hmm. also, mm -hmm. not to mention your travel and the millions of miles on a plane to get to see right. wherever that plane landed down to as well as honey you're you've lived a full spectrum from how you were raised right. and um you know out in the country of kentucky and getting to be um, um out of that and 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 not to leave that i mean really really proud and honored about your roots and, right. and keeping some um care there about your roots but uh, growing out so that you you actually are worldly in right. many many ways yeah. and th the last question maybe unless there's something you else you want to put in honey was to think about then if um you could look ahead to when you're 90 mm -hmm. what would you say to that 90 year old you don't sweat the small stuff and it's all small stuff <laughs> and um because the truth is I've been in the middle of some, so one of the things we didn't discuss was my group travel, my, my youth travel, which has been a big part of my career. I actually coordinate and, um, and escort youth travel. And, and for, for those of you who don't know what that means, <laughs> it means riding a bus for 18 hours with a hundred 13 year old kids going to Disney World and staying up for five days because they're not going to sleep. And, and really uh, also creating experiences for these young people that they would never otherwise have. Um, but I've done that for going on now about 15 years. Um, and of course, um, one of the things we didn't talk to is there's been times during the course of those trips where I had faced some, what I consider almost insurmountable um, scenarios uh, brought on by events, weather or, you know, uh, injury, sickness, things of that nature. But guess what? Even through the course of all of that, even through the throes of that, you know, rushing to hospitals with young people, rushing, you know, I, I mean, I could tell you, we could do a separate video just on that. You just always stay 
composed, don't flip out, um, even on the outside, I mean, on the outside, even though you're flipping out on the inside. <laughs> and, 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 and uh, you can take that, I could, I have been able to learn to take that and just really put it into use on a daily basis. But what I would tell my 90 year old person, my 90 year old self is one, don't make sure that while you're experiencing those feelings that you're not actually, you're not missing anything as well. Um, make sure that you're always looking around and then actually enjoying the time that you're at, whether you feel like you're in euphoria or whether you feel like you're in hell. As long as you're still in the game. Um, and then the other thing that somebody has always said to me um, is uh, if uh, in the end, everything will always turn out good, well, in the end. And if it is not good and well, then it is obviously not yet the end. So just keep on uh, moving. Just keep on moving. I mean, yeah. sometimes it's forward, sometimes it's backwards, but keep moving and don't stay stuck and, um, and you'll be fine. You'll see the whole It sounds world. like a, it sounds like your 90 year old self speaking to you also, honey, yeah, at this yeah, age, um, in the middle of our age, in the middle of our life. And who knows, you know, if it's one more day or 50 more years, our life, but it's like this, the advice the 90 year old would give us, I think would be the same thing. Don't, don't sweat the small stuff and it's all small stuff. And the difference between heaven and hell is, um, when I'm getting what I want. Right. So, <laughs> so when I don't get what I want, it's not fatal. Um, yeah, in, yeah. in your words early on was it didn't, it won't kill me. It didn't yeah. kill me. It won't yeah. kill me. Yeah. Exactly. Anything in closing, honey, you want to put in? No, not really. I mean, uh, because anything else would be just more logistics or more, um, well, I think I would like to, I think, pick that up again, honey. So we might, and even if you have a list, we might even offer it out as a checklist, you yeah. know, regarding destination travel. Think about these things, the do's right. and don'ts. If you're thinking right. about cruise travel, for example, the do's and don'ts, right. something that could really help somebody. Because I remember when we first, when I first started taking these groups on these cruises, booking yeah. with you all those years ago and uh, groups of 80 or so out on a cruise. Yeah. And I know that other people take hundreds of people, but these groups were people that most, the majority of them had never traveled. Some of them had right. not flown. They had certainly not been on cruises. So well, the they were in the bucket list too. <laughs> what was you know, that? So the one didn't even have an identification, a birth certificate. Exactly. And you, didn't you, exist. Worked, you worked <laughs> your magics. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. She was in her nineties and didn't exist yet. So <laughs> yeah. we got a proof of proof of birth somewhere where you pulled it out of your ear over time. So, yeah, yeah. um, thinking about that, that these, these tips like that, I think could be beneficial to somebody. And then even for people that are well-traveled, how much, how shocked I am in, in, in traveling extensively too, that when I'll get out on a trip with somebody and it's like, they didn't think about certain things that I think are so basic, yeah. but it absolutely did not occur to them. So right. we might think about doing an episode that's yeah. just about travel yeah. and the how to's and the not to's. And we might bring Heather in if she's interested in it yeah. Yeah. Um, or have her to drum up her own list which is one of uh, Darren's associates and colleagues. Yeah. Yeah. that that could be fun to do at another time too, honey. So thank you for taking the time to do this. Yes. Bless you, yes. whoever's yes. listening, that um, that this, um, this is in some way has mentored you, that it's uplifted your spirit, it's activated a dream or a call to action or uh, some assurance, some inspiration, and that's how it's offered. So I rest assured that it has um, done what we intended to do, both Darren and me, and that it is um, then offered out to the rest of the world. And I love you, Darren. I appreciate you. I'm grateful to share the journey with you that I get to in my own life mm -hmm. and the defining moments I've witnessed in you yeah. and got to be part of. Honey. So mm -hmm. I'm inspired um, over and over and over again by you. Mm -hmm. So thank Great. you for that. Love you too. Yeah. And thank mm -hmm. you for everything. Yeah. <laughs>